Good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the spirit of reconciliation, I acknowledge that we meet on the traditional lands of the Treaty 7 nations, the home of the Stony Nakoda, Tutsina, and Blackfoot peoples, as well as the Métis Nation of the Third Region. We meet in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen and alive, and who is with us in spirit and in truth. Even though we meet separately still during this time of pandemic, we meet as one in the spirit. So let us move into a time of prayer and offer the collect for this third Sunday in the season of Pentecost. Almighty God, without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 17 verse 22 to 24. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of a cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the forest will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 92. It's a song. It's sung on the Sabbath. It's good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Together we pray, O Most High, at all times, and in all seasons, you are worthy of our grateful praise. Grant us the insight to perceive the greatness of your works, the certainty of being founded on your eternal rock, and the wisdom to sing the praises of your name. In and through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 6 to verse 17. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due to us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces corn, first the stalk, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. As soon as the corn is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, friends. Uh, today, uh, uh, I'll be leading the kids' talk, uh, Old Reverend Daddy. And then, <laughs> and then Eve's going to Eve's going to help me uh, just have a, a conversation about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Eve, can you tell me what this is? That's a plant. That's right. And uh, how does a plant grow? So you um, dig a big hole and then plant a seed in it and then bury it and then um, take some water and then pour it over the seed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's really that's right. Um, do you think that if Daddy took a seed and he put it in a pot, do you think that I could pinch the seed and pull out a plant? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I can't do that. Yeah, that's right. I, I can't do that. Um, we have to plant the seed and then we water it and then well, we got to wait. Mm -hmm. And at the right time, the plant will sprout. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. In today's um, story, Jesus was saying that the family of God is like a plant mm. you know that we can the family of god is really those of us who trust god mm. right and so um our faith our trust in god is something very special that we can well we can plant it and we can water it you know how we plant and water our faith mm. what do you think oh it's a tough one <laughs> but you know what daddy does question. you know what a lot of us do to uh take care of our faith is well, we praise God. Yeah. So we sing songs. Um, we read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we pray. Mm -hmm. And that's a way for us to um, take care of our faith. But you know what happens is sometimes um, we have hard times. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, we're all going through COVID right now. And that's been a really hard time. And then sometimes you have sad days. Sometimes mom and daddy have sad days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I know for me, sometimes when I'm sad, I can think, oh, does God love me? Yeah. Is God actually going to take care of me? And you know what Jesus says? Mm -hmm. Is that, well, yeah, you know, we can take care of our faith. We can pray. We can read the Bible. You know, we're going to take care of the seed. But that at the right time, when we need it most, faith will grow in our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's the promise of Jesus. We can't pull it out. Like a rabbit out of a hat, we gotta just trust God, trust Jesus, that the faith will be there when we need it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, thanks for helping me. I really appreciate it. Good morning. 
All our readings this morning contain wonderful images of growing things and comparing them to what God and God's kingdom are like. Oddly enough, my mind went to asparagus. Yes, you heard right, asparagus. It's one of my favorite vegetables. As a child, I wasn't a huge fan of vegetables, but I always loved asparagus, and it could have had something to do with the yummy cheese sauce my mom made and which I slathered on. It was also a treat, as we only got it when it was in season for a very short time in the spring, and if some kind person who grew it gave us some. I think the fact that it was a spring harvest after a long Saskatchewan winter also added to its appeal. But that isn't really why I am thinking about it. When I was in the Diocese of Capel, our bishop, Michael Pierce, who as an aside went on to be our primate, used to say that he always considered it an optimistic sign when a priest planted asparagus. The reason? It takes three years of growth before it produces fruit. Produces vegetables? Well, you know what I mean. Um, he took the planting of asparagus to be an indication that the priest was committed to staying with the parish into the future, that the priest was willing to grow roots in the parish, a promise of constancy and consistency. As I was considering our readings for today, I remembered what Archbishop Pierce had said, and to be sure this was indeed accurate, I looked up the planting of asparagus. It does indeed take three years to mature, and even then, the first few years are not a plentiful harvest. There are also other important factors to consider when planting it. It takes some care, some planning, and some nurturing, but then what a reward in the end. I guess that is if you like asparagus. I could write a parable, couldn't I? Now, I realize not all of you are as enthusiastic about this vegetable as I am, but perhaps you can ride the wave of my enthusiasm? As you know, Jesus used parables to teach the truth about God and the kingdom of heaven. In this morning's gospel, we hear two such parables. These parables, like others, certainly contain messages of reassurance, but it is not always an easy path to that conclusion. Parables were not just used as a comparative way to teach, but were used to wake people up from human understanding and complacency to the reality of God. I read an interesting description of parables that compares them to fables, and here it is. A parable is intended to be disruptive, to interrupt what you thought you knew, and not just teach you something, but actually to confront you with a surprising and often unwanted truth. Fables are handy when you want to give kids some good advice or teach them some moral or practical lesson. Who doesn't remember the lesson of the tortoise and the, ha the hare, slow and steady, pays off? Or the boy who cried wolf, honesty is the best policy. Parables, on the other hand, are useful when the truth you want to share is difficult, whether difficult to hear, comprehend, or believe. And that's the end of the quote. In the parables we hear this morning, we hear that God is in charge, that although we may plant seeds, we are actually unaware, dare I say ignorant, of the ways that God works. We are challenged to faith and trust in God's ways. We are challenged to think big, that God's ways are more than we can ask or imagine. Even while we are sleeping, whether that is being asleep at the switch or actually asleep in our beds, God is at work. This parable, I think, calls for humility and humble hearts. Something that this first parable has challenged me in is the idea of seed planting. What seeds am I planting? How am I attentive to my spiritual disciplines? How am I reflecting the love of Jesus Christ in my daily encounters and actions? How do I distinguish my will from the will of God? In my life, these are questions I need to constantly wrestle with. I am so grateful for Christian community where these challenges can be shared and where together we can grow in the knowledge and love of Christ. 
Another challenge is humility. How much do I credit myself or, on the other hand, put pressure on myself to knowing the right way or the right answers without discerning the will of God and being willing to discern that will, not only on my own, but in the context of community? As Paul says in his first letter to the Corinthians, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Right now, I am hearing from a lot of people who are weary. This past year and a half has been extremely tiring, and that weariness is producing feelings of despondency, discouragement, and sometimes anger and frustration. So perhaps a call to be is an exhausting thought at this point. Maybe what we are looking for is encouragement. Some scholars believe that Jesus is linking the parable of the mustard seed to the passage that we heard from Ezekiel. I believe we can find some encouragement here. As we have been hearing in previous sermons, Mark's gospel was written in a brutal time. Mark constantly points to the kingdom of heaven, now on earth and in the heavenly future. The Roman regime was cruel and unrelenting, and the kingdom of heaven was, in addition to a challenge, a message of hope. In the Ezekiel passage, the community also found themselves in a place of hardship as they suffered and grieved in exile under a harsh and cruel foreign regime. Mark's small mustard seed and Ezekiel's twig form from a cedar provide messages of hope and renewal to a suffering world. Ezekiel speaks of a twig from a great cedar. This twig taken from the large cedar can be seen as a messianic image, a sign of hope and renewal for the people of Israel. It connects them to their past, but leads them into the possibility of a renewed and new new future. The glory of God will be revealed to all as the mountaintop implies, and this new and mighty growth will provide rest and sanctuary. In the parable of the mustard seed, again we see the kingdom beginning with something small, a seed, but then growing into something significant that again provides sanctuary. The idea of sanctuary is an appealing one to the weary and discouraged. The word sanctuary comes from the Latin and means a holy or sacred place. A sanctuary is a container for holy or precious things or people. Sanctuary can also mean asylum, a place of safety. So the kingdom of heaven represents, well, actually is, sanctuary. It is a place with God where we are considered precious and holy. It is a place where we can exist in safety. As we build our Christian communities, our churches, we want them to be places of holiness and safety for ourselves and for others. This growth of the marvelous kingdom of heaven can be seen in the small things, the simple act of planting in trust and hope that God will do something wonderful with the seeds. The kingdom of heaven welcomes the planters and provides rest to the weary. This vision is one that's encouraging. Now, back to asparagus. To grow asparagus, I need to have a vision. I know what asparagus looks like and tastes like, and I know that I really enjoy it, fresh and tender. I have a vision that involves more than one of my senses. The first concrete step in realizing this vision is to plant it. We can spend a lot of time and energy trying to write vision statements, but the vision of the church is the kingdom of heaven. We know that sadly, sometimes the church or individuals within the church lose sight of the vision and their actions can cause others to lose sight. When the vision of heaven is confused with entitlement and power, people get hurt. Sometimes in our own lives, we lose sight of the vision. It may be because we are hurt or discouraged. It may be that we have become distracted by other things. 
However, that doesn't mean that the vision no longer exists. The Gospels contain many parables where Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to various earthly things. And these parables are meant to be disruptive. They disrupt us from our current mindset and point us to a place of hope and renewal. One of the roles of the church is to provide sanctuary for those who are lost, afraid, discouraged, feeling worthless and cast out. One of the beautiful things about a healthy church community is that roles can change. By that, I mean at one time, I may be one who offers sanctuary, and another time, I may be one who seeks sanctuary. Having received sanctuary, I respond in gratitude by reaching out to others. I respond in gratitude by doing the work of the kingdom, often in the little things, through small acts of kindness, through getting to know the stranger, through lending a listening ear, through acts of hospitality and generosity. Kingdom work is owning up to mistakes and asking for forgiveness. Kingdom work is living out the golden rule by doing for others what I would have them do for me. Kingdom work is a grateful response to a generous gift. Archbishop Mark MacDonald, the Anglican Church of Canada's Indigenous Archbishop, speaks of their sacred circles where, as he puts it, the gospel is at the centre. Even in these dark days, he is not without hope, and he speaks openly and honestly and teaches, but he does so without anger. In a sacred circle, all come together, no one in the front, no one in the back, but all in a circle with the gospel in the center. To me, this is a vision of the kingdom of heaven. Through something called gospel-based discipleship, they seek the will of God in their deliberations and look for consensus in their decision-making. Each person has a chance to speak, And while that person is speaking, everyone listens. It is meant to be a place of sanctuary and from the safe and nurturing place that has placed the gospel at its center, growth and renewal can happen. Transformation is possible. When I was reading about planting asparagus, I learned a few things. Before planting, the soil has to be prepared which includes removing all weeds and grasses and can take up to a year. Like that twig from the top of the cedar, you plant the crowns and you need to surround them with rich soil and plant them 18 inches apart. You need to give the plant space to grow. In the next couple of years, careful weeding and watering need to take place. As the asparagus matures, you can't get greedy in the harvest. You can only harvest for a couple of weeks the first year, and then the first year after three years, and then three weeks the next, and gradually increasing over the next few years. That takes patience, doesn't it? But apparently, once the plants are established, you will have an abundant spring crop for the next 20 or 30 years. Now there's a vision to hang on to. Little by little, small step by small step, with care space and attention, there will be abundance, which means nourishment to share with many. We can plant and we can care, but God provides the growth. Those beautiful green shoots are God's creation. And the growing happens even when we are sleeping in a way that we can't see. In these months ahead, as we wrestle with the challenges of our present time, let us take comfort that God is at work even as we sleep, that our participation in the growing of the kingdom can be in small and faithful acts, and that there is sanctuary, a safe and holy place where we are known and loved. Thanks be to God. Shadow of turning
let us confess our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Anyone who does God's will is considered a close family member of Jesus. As members of God's family, let us pray together to our Heavenly Father. As I say, Father, please respond, let your will be done. Father, let your will be done. We pray that as family members of the Church of God, we may show his likeness by doing his will, that those visiting our churches online via Facebook, YouTube, or Church Online may find there God's beauty and truth, open-hearted loving, and a unity of purpose. Father, let your will be done. We pray that as members of the human race, we may work together, share resources, respect, and learn from one another, that leaders may inspire collective good and those with visions be valued and heard. Today, we especially remember the four victims of racial violence in London, Ontario. We pray for physical and emotional healing for the nine-year-old boy who survived. May your Holy Spirit draw close to him and comfort him and the rest of his family as they process their loss. We pray for our Canadian Muslim brothers and sisters as they mourn this loss, and we pray that you would give us courage to stand up against racism in our country. Father, let your will be done. We pray that we may give both support and space to those we love and nurture, for those of our own families who do not yet know God, that they may come to understand the depth of his love for them. Father, let your will be done. We pray that all those who come to Jesus in need may find him in forgiveness, healing, and wholeness of body, mind, and spirit, strength to cope with their difficulties, and a constant inner renewing. We continue to hold our Indigenous neighbours up to you, as all Canadians mourn the loss of the 215 children found at the Kamloops Residential School, and all the Indigenous children who did not come home from the Canadian Residential Schools. May your Holy Spirit be with them, comforting them and bringing peace. Father, let your will be done. We pray that those coming to death, as they roll up their tents of earthly existence, that they may be welcomed into the eternal home prepared for them by their loving God. Father, let your will be done. 
that as we marvel at the generosity of God's love and his acceptance for us, we may grow closer to his likeness each day we live. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, we now enter into a time of confession. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Let's confess our sins first silently and then together. And together we say, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. A couple of announcements today, friends. The first is that a couple of people have asked us where they can rewatch our sermons. So if you want to rewatch our sermons or our services or our hymns, you can find all of those things on our YouTube channel. Uh, our YouTube channel is a great resource as well if you want to share our, our content with your friends or your family and help them come to know the love of Jesus. I really encourage you to subscribe to our channel. The more subscribers we have, the more tools that YouTube gives us to share uh, our channel with other people and therefore share the love of God with other people. So I encourage you to check out our channel, subscribe and share our videos with your friends. The next announcement is that a couple months ago, we had talked about the flower chart becoming the PWRDF chart. So we had uh, our first sign up, which was really exciting. Um, The PWRDF donation for this week was given by Pat Grayling uh, in celebration of her son, Christelle, and her daughter-in-law, Barbara's birthday. So happy birthday, Christelle and Barbara. We want to celebrate you today. Uh, If you have a birthday or an anniversary or anything that you want to share with the church, you can contact me or Teresa and we can set you up with the PWRDF flower chart and pick pick the date that works for you. The last announcement is that a couple people mentioned that they didn't receive the newsletter, not this last week, but the week before. Um, So I'm really sorry if that was you. It turns out there was a lot of internet issues all over. Shaw services had problems, Gmail, and even Amazon was affected. So I'm really sorry if that happened. If you didn't receive the newsletter last week, please contact myself or Teresa and we'd be happy to figure out why that happened and if there's um, something that we can do to figure that out with you. And that's all for today. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about
as I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to Brothers and sisters in Christ, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of our compassionate God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifying spirit, be with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this worship. Please uh, consider continuing on into the coffee discussion and by pressing the link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.